When a client wants to put a new piece of data into our books database, they'll use our API. Currently, our API only has a Hello World type endpoint, where the client runs a Git request to the home route. We need to add a new endpoint that allows the client to add a book to our database. Git is a type of HTTP method used with REST APIs. It's used to request information. Other types of HTTP methods also exist, such as post, put, delete, patch, and a few others. In this chapter, we'll be focusing on post. When a post request is made to an API, typically it creates a new resource. In our case, it will create a new book and add it to our database. For the post endpoint, we need to create a contract for how the client will send us the data. The client will send a post request to the book endpoint, or the book route. In the request, the client will also send a request payload. That's data sent with the request. This payload will contain data on what book to add to the database. The payload will be in JSON format, or JavaScript object notation. This is a common format for transporting data. There will be a field for a book, containing title and number of pages values. The title will be of type string, and number of pages will be an int. There will also be a field for the author, with the first and last name as strings. When the user sends a request, they'll send a post to the book endpoint with a payload similar to this. The keys, which are book, title, number of pages, etc., will remain the same, but the values will change. In our Python code, we'll use these keys to retrieve the values the user sends. That's why it's so important to agree with the client on a contract. The client must send the data in a specific way so that the server code can actually retrieve it. Let's implement the post endpoint so the client can add a book to our database. The route is book, so we'll add that with the post method. When the user sends data to this route, we'll want to run a function that adds data to the database. The input to this function will be data that the user sends as a part of the request payload. We'll make this the book author payload data type. In order to use this type, we'll need to define it in our application. We'll do that in a separate file called schemas. We'll call it schemas.py, and this will be in the same folder as our main.py. Inside of here, we'll define the book author payload. It'll contain a book and an author. Now let's define the book and the author. Since this payload uses them, we'll place them above the payload in our file. The book will have a title as a string and number of pages as an int. The author will have a first name and a last name. Both of these will be strings. We've defined our data as classes, but in order to make them into models, we need to create them based off the base model from Pydanic. Let's import it from the Pydanic module. We'll feed this base into our model classes. Our data schema is created. Let's import this into our main application. With this import, we can access the book author payload data type from our schemas import. So we'll write schemas dot book author payload. Now for the body of the function. We won't access the database just yet. First, we'll confirm that we're able to retrieve data from the client. We'll print out each data piece to the output. That's it. We've just created our first post endpoint with fast API. Let's test our API. While we were able to make requests to the Git endpoint using the browser, most of the time we'll be using a special software to make API requests. In this case, we'll be using Postman, which is an API platform designed for developers to build and test their APIs. We can install it from the Postman website. Once it's installed, we can set up a collection that contains templates for each of our endpoints. Let's create one. We'll click New, Collection. 
We'll call it Book APIs. Then, we'll create a request to our Post API. You can left-click on the collection or click the three dots. Add Request. We'll call this one Add Book and save it to our collection. Notice it defaults to a GET request, so we'll change it to Post. For the request URL, we'll use the same host we used in the browser. The main difference is the route. So that's 127.0.0.1 at port 8000. Then we'll add our route, book. Now for the last piece, the data we want to send and add to the database. We'll click on the body tab, select raw, and we'll be using JSON format. This is where we'll write the data to send to our Python application. We'll send the Huntress. This is a book by Kate Quinn. Perfect, our request is ready to be sent. Let's start up our Python app so we can send it. We'll also save our request in Postman so we can use it later on. We'll go to our terminal and make sure we're in the books folder. Looks like we need to cd back into books. Then we'll activate our environment, source, bin, activate. From here, we'll use Uvicorn to start up our app. The app is running. Let's send our request in Postman. Everything is set up, so all we have to do is click send. Let's check out the response. We get a 200 response code back. This means everything is good. Our request went through and it was successful. We also get a text response. It has the dynamic data from our request. Let's try sending a different request. Instead of the Huntress, we'll send the Alice Network. Let's send it. Now the title is the Alice Network. We get a different response back. We can also look at the terminal window to see our request go through. Here, there are two post requests to the book endpoint. Each time, the server returned a 200 OK response code. Before we can add data dynamically to our database, we need to create an easy way for an outside module to interact with it. In this case, an easy way for an outside module to add a book. Let's create an add book function to our database.py file. Eventually, this will be used by the main.py application to add a book to the database. It'll take in a book and an author. Now to interact with the database, we'll need to start a session. In this function, we have three tasks. Update the book table, update the author table, and update the pairings table. We also don't want to add any data that already exists. This means before we add data, we should run a query to check if the data already exists in the database. We'll start with our book data. With SQL Alchemy, we can use the select function and filter where the book data is the same as the data passed in. Here, we select a book where the title is the same as the title passed in, and the number of pages is the same as the number of pages also passed in. The scalar call at the end means we'll retrieve the first row of the result. If any data comes back, we'll want to exit the function because the book has already been added. If the book's been added, We'll also assume the author and its pairing have also been added. That's why we exit here. Now, if the book does in fact need to be added, we'll add it with a session. Then we'll do the same thing with the author. We'll check if the author has already been added to the database. If the author exists, we'll only add the book. Then we'll create a pairing between the existing author and the new book.
If the author does not exist, we'll add the author and then create the pairing. We have to flush the session because otherwise, the author ID on the new author would not exist. Same for the book ID above. That's why we have to flush the session. It updates the object so the ID is not null. Once we've updated the book and author tables, we need to update the pairing table. We can do that by adding it to the session. Then we'll commit the changes. At the end, we print the new book information we've added to the database. Now looking at this file more closely, there are a few things we missed. One thing is we use select, which is a keyword. We need to add this at the top as an import so we can use it without referencing the SQL module. We also use the keyword session. We can add that at the top. It comes from the SQL ORM module. The last thing we need to add is a reference for title. Where is title coming from? It's coming from our input, book. So we need to add this in our filters for both title and number of pages. We want to select the book where the number of pages is equal to our input. This is true for the author as well. We want to use our author input data to decide if the author already exists in the database. Now, we've created a function that dynamically adds a book to our database. We have two components set up in our tech stack. We have the Fast API Python application and the code that interacts with our database. Let's connect these components. In our main application, the main.py file, we'll import the database file. With this import, we'll be able to use the addBook function. We'll call addBook and pass in the requests book and author. Now, unfortunately, it's not that easy. The book schema from our request is not the same as the database book schema. While they might look the same, our request payload schema is defined in our schemas file, and the database book schema is defined with a different base in our database file. This means we need to convert the request data into the database schema format. We'll start with the book first. We have a convert function that takes in a book, where the type is defined in the schemas file. We'll convert this into a database book by accessing the database module and instantiating a new book. We'll also do the same for our author. To use these, we'll call them with our request data. Now you might be thinking, could I use the same model? Well, it's probably a good thing they're different. This means that what the front end sends and what the back end saves in the database are less coupled. If the database wants to add another column, they can do so without the client needing to send additional information. The converter code might need to be changed, but the new column could have default data until the client is ready to send the additional data they want saved in the database. So we've just integrated our database with our Fast API application. Let's test it out. We'll navigate to our books folder and activate our environment. Looks like we're already there. Then we'll run the uvacorn command to start up our search. Using Postman, we'll send a new book to be added to the database. Where the Crawdads Sing by Delia Owens. And it looks like it was successful. Checking the logs, the new book has been added. We can also check with the MySQL shell. Let's open up another tab in the terminal window. We'll log in to the MySQL shell. Let's select all the data from books. There's our book, Where the Crawdads Sing with 386 pages. What about our author? There's Delia Owens. What about the pairing? We have author ID 2 
paired with book ID too. This is exactly how we want our data organized. We just used an API to add data to our database. It's time for a challenge. In our Book API application, we've created a post endpoint that allows clients to add books to the database. Sometimes, clients will also want to retrieve data from the database. We can develop this functionality by adding a get endpoint to our application. The client will provide a book ID, and we'll use that ID to retrieve information about the book from the database. We'll also return the author's information associated with the book. Your job is to create a Git endpoint on the route book book ID, where book ID is a path parameter that evaluates to the ID of the book. This means if the client wants to retrieve the book with ID 5, they'll use the book 5 route. If a client wants to retrieve the book with book ID 7, they'll use book 7. This is the API contract. We didn't cover path parameters in this chapter, but this is a good opportunity to use your research skills. Given that you are now familiar with Fast API, Python, and integrating dynamic data from a database, can you figure out how to dynamically accept an input within a route? Good luck and happy coding. Let's add a dynamic Git endpoint to our book API application. To start off, we'll add a Git route. The route will be book and then a path parameter representing the book's ID. To add a path parameter, we'll need to do some research. Let's Google path parameters in Fast API. Here, it says, we can declare the path variable using the same format as we do Python strings. We'll use two curly braces and then also use it as input to the function. Let's add that to our implementation. When someone uses this route, we'll want to run a function. We'll call it retrieve book. For the input, we'll have book ID from the path. It'll be an int. Now in order to retrieve the book, we'll need to interact with our database. We'll call a function called getBook from our database file. We'll also pass in the book ID so it knows which book to retrieve. Let's implement this getBook function in the database file. It'll be a new function with book ID as a parameter. Then we'll create a session with the database so we can retrieve the book. To find the specific book we're looking for, we'll use a select statement. We'll select the book where the book ID is the same as the one passed in. With the scalar function, we'll return a single object with the book data. Now, in addition to the book data, we also want to return the corresponding author data. Let's query our pairings table to find the ID of the author. Here, we use that book ID again to find the pairing. To find the author, we'll use the author ID from the pairing returned. So now we have our book data and our author data. We just need to return it from the function. We could create a custom object to return it, but here we just use a tuple. Let's test out our new functionality. We'll activate our environment and start our server. To request the book information, we'll use Postman. We'll create a new request inside of our collection. We'll retrieve book ID 2. That's the book we added in a previous video. Let's request it. There's our book data. We have Where the Crawdads Sing as the book, and then the author, Delia Owens. 
Now let's try it with an invalid index, say eight. We get an error. Let's check the logs to see what happened. It seems like the author and the book were missing from the application. Instead of returning an internal server error, we could actually return a 404 for this case. 404 is an error code that means not found. Since the book or the author was not found, this type of error is ideal. The first step to implement this is to have our database function throw an error when the book does not exist. If upon retrieving the book, its value is none, that means the book does not exist in the database. So if the book is none, it does not exist. So we'll raise an exception with the message book does not exist. Then in our main.py file, we can catch this exception and raise a 404 error. So we'll try to retrieve the book and if we get an error, we'll output it to the console and turn it in to a 404 error. Now technically, this catches every exception thrown by the getBook method. We could improve upon this by creating a custom database exception that's used for this not found case. Let's try accessing a book that's not found. Since we used the dash dash reload option on the uvicorn command, it automatically reloads the code when we update it. It detects the changes and restarts the server. Let's try this request again. Looks like we need to add an import. From FastAPI, we'll also import HTTP exception. Let's try it again. And there it is, our exception that the book does not exist. And the error code is 404. We just created a get endpoint with proper error handling that retrieves information from a database. If you want to expand on this application, you could create endpoints where you can retrieve a book by title or the books of an author. You could also organize the code a bit more by moving the converters or the database schema to a separate file. Another option is to add more error checking to the user input. We trust the client's input pretty heavily for the book author payload, and that we trust the number of pages is a positive number and that the title is in gibberish. We could add more error checking here to make sure the client's information is valid. We could also add authentication, making sure clients authenticate with an API token when they use the API. There's always something to improve or some addition you can make when working on a Python application.